Hey guys, how's it going? I hope y'all's turkey day is going great. Hey guys, how's it going? Been a good day. Yay, Cloud, nice to see you. Thank you, Belle. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys too. All I've done so far is made a Big old huge mega bowl full of sausage balls. There's just biscuits with sausage and cheese in them. I'm hoping family makes it out here tomorrow. Or maybe late tonight around midnight. And then that way they can have something to snack on before they go to bed. Let's we'll see. I am in the 2023... CPT, um, and I'm on page 218, fixing to go over here to 219. I'm just highlighting things that I see that I'm going to want to go back to or things that are in the parentheses from the CPT code descriptor because when they tell us to use a modifier, I always like to go back to that and make better notes. I'll go find the code number and then go add that modifier to it for whatever scenario is going on. That way I know directly what modifiers I can use and can't use, that kind of thing. It's always good to do that. Because you'll never remember to go all the way back up to the guidelines to look up everything before you code it. Especially during the exam. So on page 219 right now. Just highlighting, waiting on everybody to show up, and then we can do anatomy questions, some more ICD-10 questions, and what else did I have? Hip picks. Yep, I still got some more of those that we didn't get to last night. I just posted Monday's live. I still need to download last night's live. And then I'll post it. I'm just waiting on, uh, still waiting on YouTube to accept Mondays. There's still, it still says pending. I don't like to flood it with too many videos all at once. Yeah, it still says pending processing. Uh, it's 100% processed. It's just the final part, I'm sure. Oops. Thank you for the follow. You're a radiologist coder? That's awesome. I like to teach people how to pass their medical coding certification exam from the exam point of view. And that's what I do here. It could be through AAPC, AHIMA, NHA, whatever. I work in all those areas. So instead of teaching you from a coding point of view, I teach from the exam point of view. So what I'm doing right here is the very beginning parts of what I do to prep the CPT book for a coding exam. And I'm just finding all the areas I first run through that have a parentheses in the CPT code descriptor or in a guideline. This where it tells you the AKA terms, super helpful. It's also notable when you have a separate procedure. 
when it's multiple can be dual. That's why the S's get highlighted too. I like to go through here and when it tells me that a code is without something, well, I don't need to know what it's without. I just mark it out and get rid of it because I don't even need it to be in the CPT code descriptor if it doesn't have it. So that's a handy thing I get rid of because sometimes it'll say without over here and then it'll say image guiding right here next to the number. And then you think it's with if you're taking a quick, super fast look, but also get rid yeah, get rid of that one too. I mark all the do nots in red so that I remember that if this code happens to be one of my possible answers, that I will go down here and quickly look to see if any of the answers have any of these code numbers with it with that code as a possible answer because if it is then I can eliminate those really really quick and get rid of it helps me to get down to closer to a 50 50 shot on those questions usually right away so those are the first steps that I do throughout the entire book plus fix all of the out of code sequencing when it shows up as a code is out of numerical sequence and it gives you a range of codes to go look for to find them. Well, that's very annoying during a timed exam. So I go through and write down the page numbers on all those to find them quickly during an exam instead of having to rely on that look in this range of codes. That's super stressful. Oh, yeah, the entire book. Yep, yep, yep. We'll go through the entire book. What's a good study book to use for the exam? I recommend the AAPC study workbook. I don't really care what year you get, but if you get the official CPC certification workbook from AAPC, mine's from 2019, the questions from each chapter review are still the same questions and answers in the 2022 book as it was in my 2029. They just update the covers a lot of times. Some of the ENM did change in 2021, but still overall really great workbook. Um, absolutely do not, do not, do not get this book. This book at all, all they do is change the cover and... Um, there's questions, all their ICD questions are from ICD-9 questions, and we haven't been in ICD-9 in 10 years. Do not get this book, no matter what. And let's see. Most of y'all know this book, probably... <clears throat> All these are all practice exam questions taken from the AAPC's free questions from their um, um, monthly magazine that puts out 20 free questions a month. And that person is just copying and pasting and doing a really bad job at putting them here. I mean, if you look at exam question one and... Um, in the entire book when they're supposed to be 600 of them, look at A and look at C. It's the very same exact answer. And they're going to tell you that C is the answer. Well, why isn't A the answer? They don't give you any rationale either. They just give you this as a, and then half of them are wrong. And then <clears throat> their formatting is all over the place. They're just really really, really bad copy-paste here. I mean, they're just really bad formatting. My my junior high students could do better than this. But anyway, 
You can get the original real questions with the answers and the rationale if you just go to the AAPC website and look at their magazine practice questions, and they're all there with the rationale, with the correct answers, and no formatting issues. Plus, you're not spending 35 bucks on on something that's already free out there. So that's a few not to get. You can um, do just a Google search for this one. And then when you switch your search to sh- uh, shopping, You can find some that some local bookstores might have and can ship to you for free. But that's the best study guide out there right now is that one. Ahima has a really nice one. Let me see if I have that up. If y'all are doing CCS or CCA, Ahima has a really nice study book. Um, and it is called Clinical Coding Workbook. I get the virtual book instead of a printed book. <clears throat> the only thing is they only give you answers to every other question, but you also have to log on to the AHIMA website, sign up with an account, to get every other correct answer on all of the workbook. And it's downloaded in a separate document, separate from the printed book or the electronic book, but it works. I really like the formatting in the book because they have beginner exercises, questions, then they have intermediate, and then they have super hard ones. So... I like how they start out with easy ones and then move you up and then explain a little bit more and then go on. So um, they're still in the, a lot of them are in the ABC format, like AAPC, but some of them are going to be in fill in the blanks. Um, And I think you only get the evens answers, so... That's one thing to deal with. You won't have all the answers to everything. But a lot of times, if you just Google part of the very first sentence, somebody has it answered online on Quizlet, and uh, you can figure out what the answer is if you're having trouble. Or you can come to my Discord study group, which is there, and you can post a question in here, and get somebody to help you out, figure out what the answer is. We have practice exam questions in this room. We also have a room for CCS people, CCA, Um, just tons of practice exam rooms, even for cases are even in there. So whatever, got tons of rooms in there. Um, Super great study group. Y'all can find lots of help study buddies and things like that there to find my discord group just go to medicalcodingbygen.com and then just go to the tab that says social media and that's where you'll find the facebook group tiktok of course you just click on these and they automatically take you to them the youtube page where i post all these free uh, lives that i do three nights a week there and then just hit the join button for the discord and it'll throw you right into the discord group but it's all free for you <clears throat> hello OBGYN coder I did labor and delivery so very a long time in my very beginning medical career good to see you med coder Um, do I recommend going through the entire book or just one section at a time? Whatever feats your fancy. You're going to get bored of highlighting, you know, just what's in the parentheses. And then maybe you want to go into just marking all your do nots in red. Or, okay, no, I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to go in and highlight. I highlight the ones where it tells me when to use a certain modifier with another 
with the certain codes, some of the some of them it'll tell you um, like this one right here. I mark these in blue or green to say if I'm going to use a modifier, you know, on this one, it's going to be 50 for that particular code. So I I star those two. Um, sometimes you might get tired of all of this and you might want to go and do the beginning of the chapters. Each of the beginning of the chapters has an anatomy picture. Well, the best thing to do for these anatomy pictures is, let me go to the beginning of mine. For last year, this is 2022. Where's the cardiology? So that's what all that do nots and do's look like. But you want to add to these. You want to add your prefixes, your suffixes. You want to add any vocabulary terms that you need. And you also want to add the functions of those body parts. Because a lot of their anatomy questions are based off of what are the functions of these things? What do they do? So I've got prefixes, suffixes, that kind of thing. A little bit of anatomy stuff that goes on. And then I also have what their function. What's the function of the ascending aorta? It carries whatever oxygen-rich blood to the heart. What am I what am I saying? It oh to the trying to read it. Aorta. Go into the aorta. What does the um, aortic arch do? It distributes blood to the head and the upper extremities. Super handy dandy. So what I do for that is all I do is put aortic anatomy into Google. So let me go there real quick and I'll show you where I do it. A O R T I C. Aortic anatomy function. Look at how that comes up. I put function at the end of it. And then I change my search to images. And then I find images that people have openly posted over the internet that might have longer words or little paragraphs under each one that says, look, it carries the right pulmonary, carries blood from right to the lung. And that's what I did on the other heart picture. I'll go into each one and say which way it's going, the, the, the blood flow on that one, right to the lung, that kind of stuff. And I update these so that if I ever get asked anything about what does this thing do for the body, I'll know because we're not allowed to bring a medical dictionary, but we are allowed to bring these books. And so... That's what I do. It's just update them like that. So it depends on what you're in the mood for, but you got to go through the entire book and do all this. And um, I do have all the steps listed for you free on my website too. So if you do go into my website and you do sign up for um, an account, which can be free, you don't um, need to, and I'm not going to send you a ton of emails every week begging you to buy something or whatever. But if you do sign up for my website under members only, there's a page called CPT Book Prep. When you go there, it's pictures of my books and my notes. And all you got to do is click on the picture and it'll tell you the instructions on what am I doing here? How did I get here? And what, what am I filling in? But that's what that is. And that's all there for free too. So I do have tutoring and workshops and my notes in case you want them page by page. Just tell me what to write on this page and these codes if you want them. They're there in the shop, but I like to show y'all how to do it for free so you don't have to spend any money with me. Y'all get There's enough stuff y'all get charged for for trying to get this medical certification book. So where I recommend you get the medical coding books from um, Probably um, Amazon is the best place because if you get them from AAPC, they're going to charge you $25 per book to ship. So this AMA 2023 book um, you can get from Amazon and it can be free shipping. Optum is selling this one, I think right now at the cheapest price at $107 with free shipping. 
I got lucky and found one on eBay at a bookstore that I think they had priced at the 2022 um, price at $51 with free shipping. And Lord knows I snagged that up, but they quickly changed it after they shipped me mine and I got it to a more appropriate price, but they honored it. So you just kind of have to be savvy and keep looking, but any place that'll send it to you for free. Shipping, at least. All you need to do, Brooke, is probably take the certification exam again. If you didn't keep up with your continuing education credits every year and keep your certification by paying that yearly, monthly, whatever, yearly um, subscription to the AAPC and you just let it die, then you just got to take the test again. So all you got to do is go to the AAPC website when you're ready and pay for your year membership then pay for your exam take. You can take them all online from home now, or you can take it in person, up to you, and then you just got to pass. But if you wanted to get back into it and you need to take the exam again, watch my three pinned TikToks um, because it'll show you what to buy. Those three pinned TikToks right there. It'll show you which books to buy, which study books to get in the most fastest, easiest way, and the cheapest way without taking a whole course and all that stuff again, and um, in which order of which books to buy. And then it'll start you on your process of doing these notes like I'm doing here. So... AAPC website. John, um, Johnny, um, according to AAPC, they say they change the get the exam every January 1st. And there is a huge difference between the E&M and the 2022 books to the 2023 books. What I did for you guys is I made a document and I posted it on Etsy. I haven't posted it in my shop yet. I need to do that. Um, but it's like 20 bucks and it's on my Etsy at Medical Coding by Jen under Etsy. It will show you how to take your 2022 book and turn it into a 2023 book. I go through each page, show you how I fixed the code or added a code and what words I wrote to add it. And then it'll show you which codes I deleted if it needed to be deleted. And um, I also showed you what the code looks like in case you can't read my chicken scratch, where I wrote in a new code that you need to add. I took a picture of the 2023 code as it's descriptive in the 2023 book, so you could use it to compare to just in case you can't read all my handwriting. But it's not bad. You can change your 2022 book into a 2023, and that document is already available on Etsy if you want it. It's 20-something bucks. So you can instantly download it, and you can just do that, and then you'll be safe no matter what. You'll have the 2022 codes in case the exam hasn't changed, but then you'll also have the 2023 codes if it did change. So super cool. And plus, it'll save you $160 for new books, plus moving all your notes around. Yeah, that E&M section, crazy change. They deleted like 10 pages in E&M. Um, so when you're going through the 2022 book, and where did I put my 2022? And you're prepping it to make turn it into a 2023 you can easily just leave the code there so that you can see it just in case they haven't changed the exam but you can put one little line through the descriptor and a and an x you can still see 
what it was, just in case it happens to be a possible answer on the CPC exam in January. You don't want to black it all out just in case, but put one line through it. That way you'll know it is deleted for 2023. But in case the exam hasn't changed, you've still got the code and you can still see it well enough to um, use it if you need to. So it won't be bad. The only thing, they added quite a bit of new COVID um, vaccines, which I doubt will ever show up on the exam, but there are quite a few new COVID ones. But luckily, they're at the end of the medicine section, and we've got some um, availability of some pages where you can write in all those. But I doubt they'll even be there, but just in case, I'll show you where to write them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No worries. No worries. That was my first thing. How available are online jobs for coding? I've been uh, working strictly from home since 2013. And right now, if you do a search of remote CPC coders on Indeed, there's 5,000 um, online availabilities right now. Um, the best, best time to try to apply of course, for a job is always during audit season. Audit season starts in October of every year, and it goes through March of every year. It starts in October, ends in March. We're right in the middle of auditing season. That's where every single patient's chart has to be audited by a coder, and we need to find missing records, missing pap smears, mammograms. There are three hemoglobin A1Cs that they're supposed to have done every year. There are diabetic eye exams. There's just an endless supply of things we're supposed to be auditing. And every single chart has to be audited. Also, every single health plan is going to be bugging every single doctor's office to find these records. So they need medical coders to find and rule out and figure out billing stuff and errors on that. And that is going on right now. CSI or Optum has been in a hiring frenzy right now. They didn't care if you were brand new and never coded in your life. They have been hiring um, brand new coders since October. And they've been training them to be actual risk adjusters, a CRC, so they can do this audit that I'm telling you about. And um, it's all remote from home. And I even in my Discord group post jobs in there when I see them. Um, I even posted one recently that is like, what if you don't have your CPC yet, but you want to, you're studying to get it, but you still want a job in the medical field remote from home? Well, I found one that is often hiring and they pay really good money, 27 to 31 dollars an hour. And the only experience you need is customer service or call center service. And there seem to be a really nice company to work for. And you don't even need your medical coding um, yet at all for this. And um, it's called Spring Health. They are always hiring and you could start out working there while you're getting your CPC remote from home, just gives you extra stuff on your resume and the pay's not bad at all. So anyway, that's inside my study group. All this is all free. So once you get in here, if you've never used Discord, mostly it's used for gamers and stuff like that. But I have a room that's called Discord Tips. Be sure to go in it and watch the very first video that's posted there about Discord 101. It'll show you how to utilize it, either on your phone or desktop or whatever. So, you know, get the best use of all this data I have here for you. Because it's a bit of a learning curve to navigate in there, but we, we eventually figure it out. <laughs> No, usually I'm never on the phone um, myself. Um, it There's tons of jobs out there. Um, that particular job um, is about handling memberships phone number or phone calls. But like I said, it's not a medical coding job. Most of the time you are auditing charts and fixing claims. You aren't talking to patients. None of them 
really are at all. So that's not what a coder does. Luckily, we do not talk to members. Uh, what I like about my job, I'm not a coder, I'm a medical auditor, is I make sure patients get all their screenings that they're supposed to have done so it helps them stay healthy and live longer. So that's my my thing. I like to make sure that they are utilizing all the services that they are that they have access to, all the free wellness exams and things they can get. And if they have issues getting to a place or something, I make the health plans call them and uh, see what their issue is and set up arrangements, whether it's sending them a a gas gift card or something, whatever, arranging transportation. Um, so I utilize the health plans and make them do all the phone calls for me. <laughs> you will have this full live on YouTube. Yep, if TikTok records it, uh, sometimes when they're updating their systems or something like that, they have glitches every so often, and some lives do not get recorded. It happens to um, all of us, usually, all in one day, all the creators. But um, so far, knock on plastic here, we, they have been doing a great job of saving our recordings lately. So even with all their new updates... Seems like every day I come in here, we've got another update, another update. So it's a lot of it. So just keep trucking along, updating these codes and updating um, anything with the parentheses. Go throughout the entire book. And yellow, they're telling you right here that a vein is also called transvenous. Those are things that you'll need to know for your exam. The surface of the heart is also called epicardia. S could be an anatomy question on the exam. That's why I say anything that's in a parentheses can be super important to know. You want to make sure you make, make note of it. By ventricular pacing, that means to achieve pacing on the left ventricle. So that's why I am highlighting all this. It's an open book exam, which is great. Um, we don't have to memorize all this stuff. We can just leave it highlighted, go over it enough times to know where we can find answers, and then uh, utilize the open book process to answer our exams questions. I also show you how to attack the exam questions from the exam point of view. So you don't want to read the questions, actually. You want to only go to the answers and let the answers tell you what the answer is. So I'll show you how to do that. You want to avoid the questions altogether for sure. They're mentioning biventricular pacing again. They do it often, so you just get more and more exposure to it. Do you have any tips on podiatry coding on your website? I just the um, podi podiatry um, coding area. Um, where I've got the ingrown toenails and the wedges and all that stuff. I have um, notes with all the examples on how to code those and definitions and uh, scenarios listed there with those codes. So it would be in the muscular skeletal, right? Or is that going to be integumentary? Integumentary. Where is our ingrown toenails? Those are mastectomies.
so what I like to do is in this in the sections I'll go through the CPT code descriptors Let's see if I can find what I was looking for and define what each word might mean it might be too much but a puncture is a hole an aspiration is a needle into a lesion and draw the fluid I give you the definition of what a bula is it's a blister um, also called seroman fluid those kinds of things so and then if you have coding examples near those areas how would you code it and what kind of scenario would you see it in that's about as much help as I got for podiatry or whatever else all that's going to be done with every code so that Every little term that might be a little different or interesting or you might not know what it means, it's defined for you. And then I have coding scenarios next to the codes. Yep. Once you buy your book, yep. And you can... Um, once you have your book in hand, you can sit here with me. Um, all my repeat... YouTube videos um, will show you parts of the book and how I'm updating them. You'll just start doing what I'm doing, highlighting, updating your book, getting it ready for your certification exam, and then practice exam questions with me. And then as we're, the other good thing is you may not have your book updated and it might be completely blank, but you're starting out going to different CPT codes and learning how to look up these numbers because that's that's a lot of your battle. You need to be able to find these numbers super fast and any practice you can get um, of doing that will help you a whole bunch. You need to be looking up here in this area first before you look down each column for the numbers. This will help you find your numbers faster. So as I'm doing questions and I say, okay, we're going to go to this code, you need to be opening up your book and just run into that code just at the bare basics, learning how to find numbers. That's going to help out. The more you do that alone is, is great. Then once we're at a number, I'll tell you what I have listed underneath my CPT book what would I put underneath it as an AKA term or the term that I would need to look through the exam question? That's the difference between, let's see, if we were doing these two excisions, they both start out with excision, excision of, of. This is of a vestibule and this is of the labia. We also have the mouth. We could put mouth underneath this one and we could put labia underneath this one because the hardest part is when they start out with the same exact descriptor, then you got to spend time figuring out what's my one word difference on them. This one's not too bad, but some of them will be a whole paragraph and it's all the same info for both of them. And then there's just one tiny word and or whatever is making your difference. And uh, I tell you what the difference is so that you can have it here. Then you don't have to evaluate these CPT code descriptors during your exam. You just grab your one word and search your exam question for that one word. That will help you out a bunch. But you can get those words from me while we're doing these lives. And that'll help out a whole bunch too. And you get ink all over you <laughs> as you're updating these books. All right. You're welcome. Let me put away this CPT book, and I'm going to get out some practice questions for tonight. I'm sorry if I didn't get to everybody's questions. I know I missed a bunch of them. I was trying to get it to everybody. Get a drink. And we're going to start off with some anatomy questions real quick before we do coding. Get down here to the ones that I finished up with last night. All right. Don't have too many left over from last night. I usually do our lives Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. 
I do them for two hours and then I'll repost them on YouTube. I'm doing it tonight because tomorrow is when my family comes in town here. So we'll be cooking tomorrow. I didn't have to cook today. I did make sausage balls, but that's it. Some sections of the CPC exam are worth more than others. Yes, E and M, of course. You can have 16 questions, up to that many, on the CPC exam that are all E and M related. So that section is really important to learn. Back when I did this, I refused to learn E&M because it was just too much. By the time I finished integumentary, cardiology, medicine section, lab and path, hip picks, and ICD-10, I was like, I'm done. I don't want to learn any other new guidelines. So I refused to learn E&M when I did it, but I know it now. But um, I was lucky because it wasn't a main focus back in 2019 like it is now. <clears throat> You can always catch my lives on YouTube. They are posted there as a repeat. But my interactive free um, education is usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday night, 6.30 Arizona time zone. Right now here in Arizona, it's 7.30 at night. So I've been on for only about 45 minutes because I was a little late doing laundry and stuff. But um, usually I'm right on time. But it's the holidays you know, so we're all running on a little bit different times right now. But um, but these are my free volunteer hours. I do work a full-time job. I have three sons that live at home with me, with my mom. And um, so, um, plus I tutor and um, create notes, too. In every waking moment, I'm always putting notes in these books and uh, for you guys. So, And I have to do all the research. For the practice exams that we do, um, questions and put them in a document so you guys can see them. So there's a lot of prep work that goes along with this and the tutoring. So um, I do do some independent lives on YouTube for my YouTube subscribers. So there's like this paid subscription for the YouTubers and they get free like weekend lives, it might be Saturday at two o'clock or Sunday afternoon. And we go live and we do nothing but book prep and um, whatever they want to do. But um, those are just random whenever I can. They also get access to all my repeat workshops, most of them. Um, all of them, after they've already been paid for and been published by um, the workshops, and then in a couple of months, then I post them on for the subscribers at YouTube to have access to them, just in case they weren't around when we had the workshops. My workshops are on Sundays. I do them once a month, and it's three hours, and we keep the same pace as the exam. So we do 75 questions on that Sunday, and it's just 10 bucks. but we do, um, it's a Zoom meeting with all of you guys. And we do 75 questions, and I attack it just like I would uh, an exam. So if we were doing them at 144 seconds per question, I show you where in the book I'd go, what's my thought process with answering this question, what guideline do I need to know that should be running through my head right now that I should be thinking about, and uh, show you how I come up with the answers. Anyway, so that goes on on random Sundays. But anyway, y'all can help and participate right now. If y'all see this anatomy question, do y'all know what the answer might be? We can look for some similarities. We've got two that start with P. We also have three that end in Y. So what do you think is... The surgical removal of a stone out of the salivary gland or duct. And if it's a removal, do you know your suffix 
prefixes and suffixes, a suffix for removal, because that might be helpful. These are scopes. Do you need scopes to do that? Thank you for the rose, Susie. You're awesome. Thank you for all the new follows, guys. Yep. That's right, NC. You got it. Hey, Tricia. Yep. Answer is D. Very good. And here's the definitions for all four, just in case you need it. You can swipe right. It gets rid of all the chat. And then you can do a screenshot in case you want to take these and do the write the definitions in your CPT book. Um, somewhere where you know where they're going to be. <laughs> so you can find them when you need them. That's part of the hard part. Hey, thank you for all the kitty cat paws. You're awesome. Susie again. All right. Here's the next one. We're defined as a fixation or a suspension. Which one of these suffixes means suspension or fixation? I know plexi is repair, but pexi is different because it doesn't have the L. We got an A and a D. Doesn't the ORs have something to do with like testicles or the male reproductive system? Those things are suspended, maybe. <laughs> I could see where that could happen. Hey, Red. R head 55. How's it going? Good to see you. I need to know when you want to do your tutoring. I still haven't seen a message on the medical coding website. Be sure and message me there what day you want because I know your exam is coming up soon. Here is our answer. It is that pexy word. This is relating to our testicles. Yep, we got suturing with the two R's. I always see those two R's as sutures. I don't know why, but I do. I associate that with that. The O-S is scrotum, and then pexy is fixation and suspension. D is correct. Thank you, Lee, for the follow. I hope I can help you out. Hey PJ, how's it going? Hey Jessica. Hey Becky. You did on Monday, Thursdays? Okay, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. It may be a thing that I don't know who you are because I'm looking for our head and I bet your email is under something else. Like I got a Sonia this week, I got a Joanne, I got an Amy and a Jocelyn and a Cynthia. So I'm all like, I don't know who our head is. Like I don't know y'all's real names or whatever name you might use on my website. So that might be my issue. <laughs> Which one are you? Okay. M do 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 voice. Do 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 do. D O. I'm sitting here looking for it. Hold on. Uh, I don't see that. M D O V search. Mm. M. Sorry, guys. I'll be right back. I've just been trying to figure out where to find her. Okay. D O. Okay, D O V E M M Dovels M. See three thousand people and there's no M D O killing me, killing me, killing me. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Let me see if it's under 
You just go to Gmail and see if it's under maybe Gmail. Uh, go there. M D O V. Okay. I got one from March of 2022 from the email, but nothing recent. Let me go to medical coding budget. Maybe it's under a different email because now I got two M doubles. M doubles. There we go. November 21st. There we go. Okay. So that's, that's not on my website. So that's just through Gmail. What I'm, saying like um do you have an account on medical coding by gen.com because this is where i schedule my tutoring so that i can go in here and i can go into my wix and i can go in here and i can go to calendar and then i can hit my add button and see i need to add an appointment Ugh. And then I can go here and go find my client. My client will be M. Dovels, right? D-O-V. But I don't have your email in my website. So I can't attach you to a Zoom to attach you to um, a visit. So this is, this is what I need is for you to go to medicalcodingbygen.com and sign up here so I can find you here. So I can attach you to a Zoom meeting. And then that way I can do it and I can have it in my calendar so I know who else I've already got scheduled on the what days in front of me at the same time. If that makes any sense. Because if I schedule you through Gmail only and I'm not in my website with my calendar, that's how I end up double booking people at the same time. And that doesn't. I've got three people next Tuesday because I scheduled three people all on the same day at the same time. <laughs> and I had to separate them all out and do them back to back. So that, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, see this Tuesday the 29th, I've got um, three, three people. And I scheduled them all for 10 o'clock. So I had to move one to noon and then do one to three. So it's going to be like all day. I do that from time to time. So now I've gotten to where, okay, don't schedule it unless they're in the system so that I don't double book. Anyway, 20-minute conversation on that for no reason because I know you know what I mean. That is all of the anatomy that I had. We can go back to our ICD-10s, right? And then I've got some hip picks that we can do too. So now we're going to switch over to a ICD-10 book. What I'm using is the AAPC version of the ICD-10 book and the 2022 version. You might have a different one in Optum or whatever, but that's okay. Um, main thing is we just need to get to the codes fast, which is part all of it. And... I have notes for um, the ICD-10-2 that are on my website at medicalcodingbygen.com so that if you were doing like cancer or the diabetes or OB and delivery, everything's on the first page of the chapter so that it's easier to find. Instead of putting all the notes individually throughout all the cancer pages, what I do is try to put all the guidelines and stuff at the very first of that chapter that have to deal with cancer. And same thing with hypertension or diabetes. Diabetes, I actually, we have two codes for diabetes. You know, you, you've got that E10 and E11. So I go straight to those pages because it's all on the same page. One's E11, one's E10, whatever. And then I put them all on those pages. That way it's easier to find all the examples or rationale that you need. And that might help you guys. We only do about 10 areas. You know you're going to get diabetes. You know you're going to get OB and delivery. You know you're going to get some cancer. You know you're going to get burns or other injuries. You know you're going to get pregnancy. And you know you're going to get medical um, adverse reactions to medicines or something they did to themselves like alcohol poisoning. Probably going to end up with one of those. 
I do pain management. I update all those codes near the G's, G89s. Um, do all those. So we only do up about 10 sections of the ICD-10 book. We don't do up the whole entire thousands of pages of that book, but there are key areas we do update with the guidelines, COVID area, that kind of stuff, but it's not too bad. Not like that CPT book. How many questions are in the CP CPT? Uh, 70 at least. You'll have five hit picks. You'll have five uh, guideline questions. You'll have five compliance questions. You'll have five ICD-10 questions. You'll have sequencing, um, five of those. So most of it is all CPT. Then 30% of the exam is the other two books plus your rules and laws, you know, uh, the balanced budget acts and, and other things that helped with some of these uh, medical laws. You'll need to know some of those. So let's see which one is true. We're looking for a correct answer. Three of them are incorrect about signs and symptoms. I don't know what a cat code book is. You'll need your ICD-10 book. You'll need your hit picks book and you'll need your CPT book. On this one, for signs and symptoms, you're welcome, Heidi. Which one is true about signs and symptoms? I got one C, two C's, three C's. Everybody's going with C. Yep, that is correct. They can be reported when a provider does not have a definite diagnosis. We do not code them if we do have a definite diagnosis. Just because a patient has pneumonia, right, you don't want to code them with a cough, a sore throat, um, runny nose. You don't want to code for any of those symptoms. You just want to code one code for pneumonia, okay? All right. So if this was the answers to my next question, what would be going through my mind is, what is the F sections about? What's going on in the Fs? And I could just turn in my ICD-10 book, find any code with the letter F in it, and I would read the sidebar that says chapter for mental behavioral or neurodevelopment disorders. And then my Z's that are all the way in the very back of the book are usually factors influencing the health, like history of or some sort of health services going on. Am I doing a wellness exam? What's going on? So first thing is first, I need to figure out why are they being seen today? Are they being seen today for a mental health issue? Or are they being seen for some sort of wealth or health service issue? So let's figure that out. Then we can get ourselves down to a 50-50 shot, which is going to help us out a whole bunch. Why are they being seen today? There, there we go. They are being seen for a fear of open spaces. Here for renewal of medication prior to a trip to Australia.
Are we doing the F codes or the Z codes? What do you guys think? F or Z? Good job, go kart. Yep, we're going to go to those Fs. We can get rid of the two C codes. We just need to see what the differences are between the F4001 and the F4002. So let's see. What's our differences? F4001 is a panic disorder and O2 is without a panic disorder. Do we have a panic disorder or not? We do have some excludence notes. Get rid of all my lines. I'm making too many lines. With or without? Do we see here at all that the patient or the psychiatrist is stating that they have a panic disorder? Yeah, we don't have panic mentioned. All we have is a fear of open spaces or public spaces. We don't have any mention of a contributing factor or anything related to it. So, yeah. B would be my answer, too. There you go. I don't even know how to say any of those phobias, so I'll just let y'all pronounce that. But we do have a guideline, too. All right, again, same thing. We've got Z, which you know is probably a wellness or um, some sort of um, long-term history of some disease. What is our L section on? A, B, C, D. L, if we look at our sidebar, is skins and subcutaneous <laughs> tissue issues. Thank you, Susie. You're awesome. Thank you, thank you. Why not the Z code? Because the Z code, Z code would imply that the condition has been fully treated and no longer exists. That means you have a history of or whatever else. So this patient clearly still has the disease and is still actively being treated, so we would not do the Z code. There we go. On this one, either the patient's being seen for a wellness exam, which is our ZOO, or they're being seen for a skin condition. So let's check it out and see what's going on. What are they here for? They're here for a routine wellness exam. So I know Z code is going to be there. I can get rid of this one and I can get rid of that one. I can just check and see if we're going to be a Z00.1 or a Z00.0. Let's go check it out. All the way in the back of this book, Z00.00 is an encounter for a general adult wellness exam. This kid is six months old, so I know it's not B. Other than that, I would just pick D and move on to my next question. You don't need and you don't have time to look up every single code. If you exclude one and you already had it excluded down to just two and you exclude one of them, don't go looking up the other one. You don't have time for that during your exam. You can look it up now since you've got time, but our one 
to one is an encounter for a child health examination. So yeah, just age was the only thing you needed to note. We don't need to know nothing about diapers or vaccines or nothing else. Remember, this exam is giving you 144 seconds per question to look up the codes and figure out the answer. If you read every word of every question and carry all those words with you, then your brain is going to get fatigued halfway through your exam. All I took from this exam question was six months and routine wellness. That's it. I didn't need to know none of this other stuff. If it's unrelated to these codes and doesn't help you pick out the answer, don't read it. Don't carry it with you. You're going to end up with brain fatigue and not be able to finish the exam either because it's just slowing you down. Yes, all the exam questions are multiple choice. Yes. Very good, Cynthia. Susie is number one tonight. You've got a big old red number one next to you. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. And thank you for the likes. I forgot who that was. It was just on the screen for just a second. Somebody was tapping the likes and I lost it. But thank you very much. Is this how the exam goes? Yep, sure is. It is all multiple choice. And I show you how to answer the questions just like I would if I was taking the exam. All right, K's. What are our K's? What is that? B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, J, and then K. K's are the digestive system, and then our Z's, again, are health conditions, health status, something influencing the health of this patient. What are they being seen for today? Um, we are just coding them with the colonoscopy. Col costomy, the stomy thing. Um, it's just a health condition that influences their health status uh, we need to know that they have this colostomy thing to be able to um, prescribe the medicines. It all gets digested a different way. This is just a health status thing. So we know right away we can get rid of the Bs. And we need to go see what our differences are on the Z43 and the Z93. I don't think we'll have to go all the way down to the point three. Let's go see what our differences are. Z... 43, that's an encounter for an additional artificial opening. Yep. And then our 93, what's the 93? Just curious. It's also an artificial opening status. And it's also for the colostomy status. Are we coding for the status that they have the colostomy or was the visit for the colostomy? It just says that they're not requiring any treatment for today's um, scenario. We're just coding the status that they have one. So that answer is D, guys not C. You can see in the C, Z43, that that says that the encounter is for the artificial opening, but right here it says that it's not part of today's visit is what this sentence means. Yep. That's why the 93 is because it was just to simply say this patient has this. Yep. A little tricky, a little tricky. There's no complication with it. They didn't need to be seen about it today. It's just a fact of life that the patient has one. That's all. All 
All right. We got two Q's. What is that about? Let's see. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Q, then an R, right? So our Q's are malformation, chromosomal abnormalities of patients. Our eyes, is that cardiovascular hypertension or something like that? Congestive heart failure. What have we got? Diseases of the circulatory system, or they're here for a Z code, a status of some sort. So let's check out our question. We're just looking for those differences. Today, they are here for what? They're just here for our heart test. And it's just a screening. What kind of code would we be billing if we're doing a screening? Would it be the Q's, the I's, or the Z? <laughs> Good job, bad gal. Good job, go-kart. Yep. That's all you have to do. You didn't even need to look up the codes. You Just knowing just that tiny little bit in this question, gets you don't even have to look up the codes. So anytime they're here for a screening, yep, it's just a Z code. Perfect. Good job. Easy peasy. Oh my, cancers or HIV? Let's see, we got HIV written down three times. If you don't know, B20, oop, we got fuzzy. We got fuzzy on you, there we go. We got HIV status, no symptoms right there, and we've got a cancer. You can't bill the Z21 with the B20, so that one right there is a coding irregularity. No, that ain't going to happen. So we can get rid of that. It's either this or this, but it's based off of symptoms or no symptoms. And then whether they're here today for cancer or they're here for the HIV. So let's see what's going on. which is a manifestation of HIV, or AIDS, I mean. Yep. So when we go to our HIVs, which is another one of those sections you do have to have up and done, Along with septic in the A40s, also these HIVs. Another section of the that we put up history of. Koloshki sarcoma is a lymphoma. The reason for the visit, other conditions, is what always goes first. I have this little chart that I do in my books. So this means no symptoms. This means symptoms. Our patient is having symptoms, obviously. So we're going to give the reason for the visit. is going to be coded first in sequence. Any other conditions that might arise from it or like diabetes or whatever else they might have long term. And then we do our B20 last. So that's super helpful, usually. But since they're having symptoms of their HIV, 
on this one, yeah, they're going to do the HIV first, which is our B20. Killer. <laughs> and then we'll do our cold batch case at the end. This one is a non-specific code. We don't want to do anything with nines in it at all. Yeah. All right. We're going to have uh, another one with just our external causes, which is super helpful. What I do in chapter 20 and chapter 19, I write at the beginning of each one of these, the chapter 19 and the chapter 20, that we write out cause, intent, place, activity, and status. That way you can remember which codes go first. They're usually sequenced for you during the online during the exam so you don't have to worry too much about it but that's why they're in this order of the s's before the w's it is sequenced but just in case it's just going to be a difference between all of these i would get rid of a because it's not the same as c d and e just simply based off numerics numbers they've got these down the S81s down three times, so I'd get rid of that. Then I come here and I see that C is different from B and D, and I would get rid of C. AAPC has a habit of giving you two throwaway questions, and then they have two that are the very same, are very much alike, but there's one difference. This one has an XA, and this one has a 92A. You need to know what those differences are and would you do that. Do we do a 992A or do we normally see the X as a placeholder in these S codes? We can go to our S84 and look real quick, but I think we see the X's, don't we? We have that placeholder there. I don't remember ever seeing one that was a 992A. So I think D is our answer, even without looking at the question. S84. S84. Get all the way to that one. S84. If I can get these pages separated. S84, yep. S84. 92. Nine two is as far as it goes. We don't have any other codes after that. If we go to our S84, just plain, just those three digits, you'll see what the definition of the A is. A is initial encounter, and it requires seventh character. You see those at the very beginning right at those areas. Super helpful. I'm at S85. Here is our S40. There it is. That's how you figure out what that last seven digit is going to be. And then when we get all the way down here to our S84, where was that? S84? Yeah, 92. That code doesn't go any further than that 92. We'd have to put in a X because that is our sixth character. It's just a placeholder. The codes don't even go any further than that. Some of them do, but this one doesn't because it starts over at the S85. So this one doesn't have a sixth character. It only has five characters. So we put in an X placeholder and then put our initial encounter A at the end. So even without looking at one word of this question, I would pick D and move on to my next question. I wouldn't look at the question, but I'll let y'all look at it if y'all want to. But I wouldn't change my answer, no matter what it said. We're doing um, injury, unspecified nerve to the lower leg, level left leg. 
Lower leg laceration involving the nerves. Yep. Left. That's all we need. All right, let's see. D is our answer. Yep. And there are some rationale for you. Another D. All right, I'm not going to tell y'all anything on this one. Y'all are going to figure it out on your own. Are you going to be an R code, a symptom before a cancer? Interesting. What is our R93 since it is in three of the answers? I said I wasn't going to say nothing, but I'd go look that up if I was you guys. <laughs> Here's your question. What do you guys think? Everybody thinking B? Hmm. This is going to be for the, who are we billing for? Who are we billing for? The radiologist suspects the reading of the CT scan head that has cancer has spread to the brain and the PET scan was ordered for further rate study. The correct codes are a physician orders an outpatient CT scan, which of the brain the radiologist suspects from the reading that the CT scan that the cancer is spread, and that radiologist wants to have a PET scan done. And how would we code that visit? I think that symptom of that spreading is our issue today. So it is going to be a symptom. It is going to be that spread. And then we just need to have the brain cancer afterwards, right? So we probably only need the two diagnoses. Yeah. So I bet it's going to be A. We can, especially if the patient's in the hospital, do they do, you know, You can do suspected. Our, and if you look at 93.0, it's not a suspect code. It is an abnormal finding of a diagnostic imaging of the skull and head, not elsewhere classified, meaning that we have an abnormal diagnostic imaging, which we do. The CT scan is abnormal and... They believe it has metastasized in the brain, so it's an abnormal x-ray, and we're ordering another x-ray. So technically, it's not really a symptom, but it is a symptom. We And then the C41, is that a metastasized code, or is it just the cancer code? So I doubt they're going to code them as metastasized yet until you get a definitive answer. C41, C41.9, it's not specific. It is malignant neoplasm, yep, of bone and cartilage, really? Ugh, terrible, not even of the brain. What a terrible diagnosis code. But 
They're not diagnosing the patient with metastasized brain cancer yet. They are just giving them a very generic code of a neoplasm of cartilage and bone. Wow. Yeah, because see, they're, they had bone cancer, and they think it has metastasized to the brain, but they're not saying anything about brain yet. No one is because it's still a suspect. They're just still keeping on with that bone cancer. Here's your answer, your rationale. Only the bone cancer is reported as secondary. And the abnormal test that we had is coded first. All right. Next one. Our A's are like blood disorders and stuff like that. What is H's? H is disorders of the eye. Yeah. So... Let's see why the patient is being seen today. Are we doing eyes? Or are we doing something else? Diagnosed with scarlet fe fever along with acute otitis media. Hmm? The answer was A, the one I have circled. A was the answer. A was the answer. This one, we've got a kid with scarlet fever with acute otitis media. You're welcome. The A38 is in every single one of the answers. So I would run to that code, see what in the heck's in that code. Make sure it's not a combo code or something. And plus it's in every single answer. So you know it's got to be right, but why is it right? What does it say? A38. 38. 38 point... There's some that say nine and some that say O. Oh. Only one says O. Oh. Scarlet fever with otitis media is O. Oh. That's it all by itself. Let's just see. Because the nine that's in all the other answers is uncomplicated. But this one is complicated with an ear infection. You can get um, myocarditis and some other complications. They can have little mini seizures with it, too, because they just get so hot. That would be the eight. So I do see on that one. Yep. All right, we've got some of those category two codes, or not category co two codes, what am I saying? External causes codes, or we have symptoms first, R11. What is our kid being, or person being seen for? This is a guideline question. Which one goes first? When a doctor prescribes you a medicine and you have a reaction to it, what goes first? Is it the, the, the name of the medication, which these are? That's what these are. Or do we do the symptoms that the patient had? A reaction. 
correct. So that tells you without even looking at the answers, as far as looking them up in the ICD-10 book, which one is the answer? old 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 book let me see I wanted to show y'all what I wrote up because I like the way I wrote it up in this book if I can find it I almost had a sticky note on it and I took that off it's gonna be right after that right here We're going to my lab because I'm running out of dust space. So if you do it to yourself, the poisoning goes first, then the manifestations, and then the whether you're addicted or not. So if you drink too much alcohol, if you take too much mushrooms, you take your Aunt Sally Sue's leftover antibiotics and you give yourself a reaction, this is the format in which you code what comes first, second, or third. If a doctor gives it to you, then this is the way you code it. If a doctor prescribes you something, you have a reaction to it. It's always the adverse reaction, hives, rash, difficulty breathing, your heart stops. It goes first, and then the drug goes first. Last, I mean, sorry. <laughs> So that's your two differences. Just be sure and know that guideline for the exam. You will be asked it for sure in some way, fashion, or form. For sure. Can you put that up there? I'm sorry. You can't see all the questions. I'll get it up back up for you again. There you go. Y'all, I bought a new um, ICD-10 book. I don't even know if y'all can be able to see this. Oh, let me figure out if y'all could see this. I always wanted to see what was inside this one. I have no idea about it or what it has in it. I just wanted to know what it was. Y'all, look at this thing. This thing is so huge. Hold on. This thing has... Oh, my gosh. It has, look, I can stick my whole arm inside the, the thingy. <laughs> this thing is behemoth. It's 2,000 pages of an ICD-10 book for 2023. It is the most massive thing I've ever seen. And it's just color-coded is the only interesting thing, I guess, about it. But um I just always wanted to see what one looks like. So I got it for the 2023 version, but oh my God, it's, it's 5,000 pounds. Anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything in there that might be helpful for you guys, but goodness, what a book. The thing is huge. Yep, my children were like, oh my God, Mom, you're not doing all the notes inside that thing, are you? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. I just want to know what it says. Why is it 2,000 pages in that dang big? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's your question. So we know rash is going to go first. So without even looking up any of these codes, you only have one answer where the symptoms go first. And C is going to be your answer because the doctor gave them this medicine. And that's the one where the symptoms go first. 
I know. I'd be doing those till 2025. I know, I know, I know. But I hope it's got some cool information in there for you. I mean, you know, that might help. Um, they do take the guidelines and rewrite them kind of in their own way. They, they have, like, after every paragraph of the guidelines in the front, they write some red notes after it. I don't know what they say, but I'll see if it, it helps with any of the guidelines. And then the color coding is really to help with the differences between unspecified and what's that other dang thing? Um, oh, let's see. Non-specific codes. So those two differences, the unspecified means the description includes the term unspecified. Use only if more specific diagnosis is not available. And then the non-specified codes, we only use those when they're non-specific or unspecified diagnosis means um, we just have no other code available for it. So they only color code those things. Then they code codes in red if it's requiring a fourth or seventh digit. And then they color code all the manifestation codes. So if it shows up in a blue, then that tells you don't use that code as a primary code because it's manifestus, manifestation of something else. And you got to go look for the first code that should go before it. So, and they did all those in baby blue so I mean is it worth it to go through that entire ICD-10 book and look up where all the manifestation codes are and blue highlight them no you only have five questions in ICD-10 um, so that that book is is overdone for you guys but um, anyway I'm hoping it has something in there that might be helpful there's the rationale on this one. So my ADHD is going off the walls today. Me going from one to another thing, subject here, but y'all hang out. <laughs> we'll do some more questions. All right, all 062s. So we're just going to run to the 62s, right? We're going to go see what our differences are between the point three and the point eight. Get us down to a 50-50 shot first. So, O, 62. O, 62. O, 62.3. We got our precipitate labor, and then we got our point eight, which is abnormalities of forces of labor. <laughs> what in the heck? Yeah, this is just an, an other non-specific code, so probably not the other. Probably not. Let's see what our question is. What have we got? We got precipitous labor spelled out right there for you. So we can get rid of C and D. Then we just need to know, do we have a Z37 or a Z38? So back to the book we go. Back to the Zs. 37, Z37. Which is outcome of delivery. Our point O is a single live birth. And our 38.00 is single life born infant also. One of them's born in a hospital. The other one is non-specific. Which one would you code? Since they both say the same thing. 
Probably not, Susie. This will be my third one this week. I'm going to be cooking tomorrow, so probably not. If I have time, I will, but probably not. So what do you think on this live birth? Our Z38 must be, what does the guideline say? Principal diagnosis for birth. And we can't code the Z38 because she had an abnormal start out to her delivery. So because we have the 062.3, you can never use the Z38 with it. So we have to use the A. Do you see that guideline? So our Z, let me see here. R Z38, it says something here about the principal diagnosis. You remember, you got to stop off at the first three digits first, skim over your header before you go down here. Because if you just go down here, you're going to, of course, want to pick born in the hospital. But you got to make sure you check your header first. And this needs to be the principal diagnosis. And we can't do that because we have that O code because she's got the abnormal pregnancy. That's why they use this one it's to be the secondary diagnosis of the visit because we had a primary issue to go along with it. It's something about an additional code to identify the outcome, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So one of those fancy guidelines... Oops, sorry. Sorry, Susie. Okay. So, because this patient had precipitous labor and we have to use the 062 as a primary diagnosis for this visit and labor and delivery, we can't use the Z38s. The Z38s are only used as an outcome of delivery when everything is normal, happy, happy, baby comes out, we didn't have any issues. We have to use the Z37s if there happened to have been something that contributed to the delivery of the baby that was important that we need to code, like the precipitous labor. So this is why they were admitted. They weren't admitted for delivery of the baby, but that's what happened. But their admitted diagnosis has to go first, and the Z38s are not intended for that. And if you make sure that you stop off at any of your codes, even the S's, the T's, whatever, make sure you stop off at the very first three digits. This is where they notify you of all the guidelines that are related to this whole series of all the three eights. And so right here, it says that it must be principal diagnosis of birth record. That's what that means. So if they should just come in because she was in labor and had a happy, healthy baby, then great. But because she had preterm labor, and that's why she got admitted, we have to use that other diagnosis code. Then we use the Z37 code to do the outcome of the, the delivery because this is the codes that we can use as secondary diagnoses. We can't use the 38s as secondary. They have to be primary, 37s are secondary. So anyway. Maybe that helps. I hope that helps. No complications versus complications. Yep. Perfect. Y'all are y'all can explain it better than I can. Perfect. And there is your rationale too, in case you like it in wordy format. Sometimes people like that. Thank you for all the likes. Oops. What did I tap on? No, I don't want to end the live. I want, oh, 
We almost got 2,000 likes tonight. Only 20 of you on tonight. You're welcome. You're welcome. But I will post this up for the other ones to watch. All right. Let's see. Are we doing cancer codes or L codes? What is L? A, B, C, D, E, F, L, and then M. L is diseases of the skin and tissue. I thought that sounded familiar. Skin. This is cancers. Usually the 76s are metastasized. And this is primary cancer, usually. Um, I found one last night that was... It was a primary cancer in the back, but usually those are metastasized cancers with the higher numbers. But anyway, let's see what's going on today. They are being seen today to get rid of two cancers, right? Skin lesions. So we're not going to diagnose them with some sort of skin issue. We're going to diagnose them with cancer, right? So we've got... Two malignant skin lesions on the right leg. Which one would be of the right leg? Let's go look. Are we going to be C? The 76s are super close together. Let's see. Where are the C's? Ooh, I'm still on the H's. Cancer. 76s. We got two of those. 76 point what? Okay. 76.50, 76. We've got ill-defined sites. Mm. Why would we be a, a neoplasm's unspecified lower limb? I don't know why you couldn't specify this. What's our 76.8? Unspecified. Both of them are other or unspecified stuff. Yuck. I don't like those. Let's go to our C44. Anybody else looked it up? Did you look at this? See, beauty must, or because, Becky, she, I keep wanting to call her beauty for some reason. Um, C44. Did y'all already look it up? I would have ignored it to the last. This is malignance of the skin, lower limb. That looks better. That looks better. C44702. It is neosplasm of the skin, right lower limb. Do we have a right? We do have a right. Yeah, I like C2. I think you're right. I like C. Perfect. Fs. All Fs. We've got two. One of them's the 19 and one of them's 10. I'd go to those two first, see what my differences are, and then read the question. A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. F, 13. 13, 10. Don't forget to stop off at F, 13. Look for it. Drug use during pregnancy. We don't go here. We go somewhere else. Other than that, we're good to go. 10 is for a sedative, hypnotic. Yep, yep, yep. And then our 19, next page, is abuse. They're both abuse. But one of them's induced disorder, and the other one, how would you induce a disorder? The other one's uncomplicated. Oh my. 
Let's see what we've got. We've got barbiturate dependence, anxiety due to dependence. I don't think we're induced, and I don't think it's the unspecified either. So let's go look at our other ones. 28. What's our 13? 28. 280. 280 is super specified, has all three digits. So that looks promising. Anxiety is mentioned in our 2.280. I mean, I like B. What do you guys think? It's weird. It didn't end up being our two most like ones. It ended up being our three digits, which is totally different from all the other ones. But I know that point nine is going to be nonspecific too. So, yep. B. Yep. Ooh. Another one. All right, I've got all of our external causes here. What have we got going on? We've got three with S62, so that would I would get rid of A based off that. Then we've got 62.6, but oh, these two have fives. One's a B and one's an A. What's our definitions for them? To figure out the definitions of the B's and the A's, we got to go to S62. So let's go there first. Just plain old S62 first. S62, only three digits. We'll get our definitions. A is initial encounter of a closed fracture. B is initial encounter of an open fracture. Let's see if we have an open or a closed fracture. Now, the repair of the fracture could be open and closed, which could be different, okay? The surgery to repair a fracture could be open and closed, which is different than saying that the leg is open fracture and closed fracture, two different entities. So we're only looking for the leg that is broken and whether it's open through the skin or not on its own, not the surgery to fix it or whatever. Anyway, we have a compound open fracture. So our open fracture is all the B's. So we know the A is going to go away. So what's our differences between the 5 and the 6 in this S62? S62... Point five is a fracture of the thumb, and then the six is a fracture of other unspecified fingers. What what what, what was fractured? Multiple phalanges of the right long finger. We're dealing with fingers, so we're the six. We're the six. We're B. B. So this was a thumb and this was fingers and that was our only differences and that's all you needed from the question was whether it was open or closed and were you doing fingers or thumbs. That's all you needed out of the question. Hey MK, how's it going? That was a cool question. I like those where you can take them one little step at a time. Those make sense to me. Plus, I like avoiding reading all of those words that we don't need. You getting nervous? Don't be nervous. We're going to be tutoring in the morning. Right? Did you get my message? I was asking what questions, kind of questions that you wanted to do tomorrow so I can prep tonight. So let me know um, what kind of questions you want to do tutoring in the morning on. That way I can have them ready if you haven't already. I'm sure you already saw the message.
probably Okay, thanks, thanks, MK. Sorry, I was replying to a message somebody sent me. All right. There's the answer for that one. It was B. Hold on, I got a cat fight. Sing, you know better. Stop it. You know better. Come on. Come on, my love. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. All right. Had to put that baby out. Let's see. That is it of my E and M's, and um, I've got a few hit picks, but we'll do those the next time I go live, probably on Monday for you guys, unless I get more time to break away to do some more Saturday or Sunday. Monday, I have my. Um, oldest son's best friends coming into town to spend nine days with us so that'll be so much fun I haven't seen him in forever uh what are we gonna do we're gonna do I'm gonna go find what MK wants me to prep for tomorrow and get that ready and I hope tonight was helpful with the anatomy and the rest of those ICD-10 codes um I will be downloading the videos for, I've got to download the TikTok video from right here, November 23rd. Yep, got to download that one and get that one posted. This is my next move onto YouTube. I got to hit download right here. There we go. Once that finishes downloading, then I'll post it up on YouTube for you guys. And that'll get all that caught up. I've got what has been on the exam in the last 45 days updated to. Somebody emailed me last night some more information right here that I, I'm going to be posting right now. The document is 77 pages long. Oh my gosh. But I got to email it out to everybody. And I think I've got all the info on it that it was given that is was on the exam in the last um, month. So the month of November, I had five people come forward and tell me what was on it. So I've got all five of them on there. So all I got to do is turn it into a PDF and hit save and then go find everybody's email address and email it back out <laughs> to all of you. But yeah, I had five people. So let's see. She thanked me. Yep, yep, yep. Some questions. I don't remember, but she had a cardiac question on code 37225. She had the day, day, day cry. So we've got um, the lacrimal gland in your eye was asked about. She had a laser with the 67145 code. She had the my ring with the anesthesia, prolonged, E&M service, ED, 
and a patient with consult with no referral question. Proctors were great. They gave positive encouragement during and before her exam. That was nice. She said that the exam was nothing that she expected. Um, It wasn't hard or in-depth. A few questions made me ponder, mainly referencing guidelines. Your voice was in my head from those TikToks, knowing your book and where to find things. There was no COVID questions, she said, and she recalled maybe a sepsis question, but did seem like she got too hard of a one. It looks like from the My Ring um, and the Day Cry that she got exam B to me, but I don't think she knew which one she had. But there's several versions of it, but it looks like she got exam B to me. But that's the last person, so I am going to get that posted. MK. You got sepsis on exam C, yep, diabetes and retinopathy and MRSNA. Oh, my gosh. Good gracious. I can't remember anything I couldn't write. Yeah. Diabetes with retinopathy was on exam B. Okay. Sepsis was on exam C. The impending question was on there. Impending. So if you go to the index, actually, in the very beginning of your ICD-10 book, and you just look up the word impending. A, B, C, D. And then I. M pending. I am pending right there is your answer. And it's just the coronary syndrome, which is the heart attack. Same thing as the heart attack. It's that I 20.20.0, sorry. That is the answer to the impending question is right there, which I do have on. I have a copy of this picture on that document that is what's been on the exam the last 45 days. It's just raw info of people that took the exam and then they let me know what vocabulary words or what CPT codes were on their exam. And then I can share that info with you guys. You can do your own research on what these codes are or what kind of questions could come up with these CPT codes by looking in Quizlets or throughout your practice exams. But that's what this document does. Yeah, am I? Am I is the answer. Yes, this uh, document is on um, my website or on Etsy, and it has practice questions on it, too, if they said that question was on their exam, Um, or that if I happen to have a definition from them telling me what they thought, Like this tells me, I can't remember the exact question, but she remembered what the answers were, but something about an iliac artery repair. This document is raw. It's just from them, but I do try to help by finding practice questions that, um, that will go along with the vocabulary term that was there, and I do put those in there when I do find some as I can and then most of it is conversations from them or practice exam questions that they know was on there or just words I wish I'd had something like this before I took it at least I'd know to go look up what this means you know you never know just as long as I knew what the definition was then great I would that would be great just to have it what is this do I know what kind of surgery that is and uh, how would you 
do the anesthesia with it. That's just great. So it's for sale in the shop at medicalcoatingbygen.com. I think it's 25 bucks or something like that. Um, but the proceeds to this gives people free um, tutoring sessions with me and free notes too. So this goes out to give it back to you guys just in case. But I just got to print it. And then if you buy it once, I continue to send you all the updates. So you probably will get updates even after you pass your CPC exam, just because I have your email address tied to this. So when you do purchase it, please make sure you have a valid email address in here because I can't go get a message from you saying I never got my update. The only reason that would happen is because you have a wrong email address in your purchase order. That's the only reason because I generate a list, an email list from those purchase orders. So if you don't type it correctly, then you're not going to get any updates. So, and, and I can't handle so many people sending me, oh, well, I didn't get it. Here's my new updated email address. And then remember every time that I send out the updates that, oh, yeah, so-and-so gave me a different email address. And I got to go find that email again and then add them to the list. It's just too, too much. So be sure when you do order this document that you do give a valid email address. I promise I don't spam y'all. I don't send y'all stuff for no reason at all. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. <laughs> I your proctor wasn't great and she was super rude. Oh no, that's terrible. I, I'm going to work on sending this out right now. So I just got to finish downloading that last uh, TikTok right here. Oh good, it's done. I'm going to go post that up to YouTube right now. And then I'll work on sending out that new update tonight. Okay guys? All right. I will post it in our Discord group in the main chat room as soon as the email goes out with that update so that y'all can have, know that it's been sent and y'all can check your spam and stuff. I hope this has been helpful. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Thanks for the 19 of you hanging out with me tonight. I will see you in the morning, MK. Okay, if you're talking about me and tutoring in the morning, it'll be 9 a.m. my time, which is 8 a.m. your time. If that's okay, if it's not okay, we can move it because our time zones have changed. No problems, PJ. Thanks, Jessica. Happy Thanksgiving, our head. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Oh, your start exam time. You, you need to start logging on 30 minutes ahead of time. Always. If you're doing it remotely. And if you're showing up in person, show up to your exam 45 minutes early to get your books checked, get your seat. So. Thank you, go-kart. All right, guys. Our head, make sure you go to my website, sign up for an account on my website, message me there. That way I can get the schedule done on my calendar where I've got everybody else already scheduled. <laughs> All right, MK, see you tomorrow morning. See everybody else back on Monday night live. <laughs>